Hey everybody, Dan Warpaint JKU. Welcome back to the channel. As you can see, I'm back in the garage. I got Warpaint behind me. And if you follow my Instagram at Warpaint JKU, you guys know that I just recently, or actually currently, we're doing a giveaway on a Yukon Hardcore diff cover. Well, I got the same diff cover for my Dana 60, and I'm about to swap it underneath my Jeep. Now, for those of you that don't know how to do a diff cover swap, I'm going to show you. For those of you that are just interested in checking out the new diff cover and comparing it to the one I'm currently running, stick around. That'll be toward the end of the video. And for those of you guys that want to see what the inside of a diff looks like that don't know, uh, don't know what the different pieces are, I'm going to talk about those too. So stick around, check it out. Now, anytime that you're draining diff fluid, you're gonna to wanna to catch can at the bottom, obviously, to catch everything. You're also gonna to wanna to maybe make sure that you got a pair of rubber gloves on and have some paper towels nearby. It can get messy. We're gonna loosen this up. And there's our diff fluid. As you can tell, it's obviously a very cold day here in Texas, so that diff fluid's uh, kind of thick. Make it flow out a little bit faster. We can also remove the fill plug at the top if you have one, and then it won't won't chug its way out of there like that. Now. My diff cover is held on with something that I have found uh, works way better than a gasket uh, and it stops all the leaks and seeps that you get out of it, especially when you're going to rub it on rocks every once in a while. So while it's finishing draining here, I'm going to remove all the bolts because it's not going to fall off and I'm going to leave the top bolt in. I'm going to loosen it, but I'm going to leave the top bolt and we'll talk about why I'm going to do that when we get there. All right, now that almost all the fluid is, rem is removed and drained and all the bolts are taken out except the top one, I'm going to put the, the drain plug back in, which can fight you a little bit because it's got a big magnet on the end and it likes to try to stick to the diff cover instead of actually lining up and threading in nice like it's supposed to. I'm going to be using just a regular old hammer and an old flathead screwdriver that has a pretty damaged tip. I'd never want to use it on a screw, but it's fine for, for using as like a pry bar. And I just want to work it in between the seal that I have here and the diff cover so I can, so I can break that seal. See, and that is the reason that you would leave that top screw in there because if we didn't this pan would have fallen off it would have made a mess and you're always going to have more fluid in there now it allows you to drain it out catch it and make the whole job a lot cleaner this this stuff i use to seal on these diff covers is actually so good that every once in a while when you break the seal you'll notice there are no bolts in that diff cover and it is still not falling off uh so you know, you leave that bolt in there as a precaution, and if you have a gasket, it's a really good idea to leave it in there. But now you just want to be careful as you break the rest of the seal, especially if you have an air locker that you don't catch your air line. And there we go. Now, when you hear someone talk about a ring gear, this is the gear right here that they are talking about. It's basically a large ring held on by a number of bolts on the other side. I'll show you that in a second. And then this is your carrier in the center. Now my carrier does not look like a lot of others because this is an air locker. If you don't have an air locker and you have an open diff, you're actually going to be able to peer through some openings right here and see a bunch of uh, little gears and they call those spider gears. Now you can see my, my mating surface around my Dana 60 is not, not terribly dirty, but I do have some of that gasket material that 
that was pushed in and dried the last time I applied my, my diff cover. So we're gonna have to get all that kind of stuff out of there. We're gonna have to clean all this off, make sure we can get it as clean as possible. And then I'll show you what I use to apply the new diff cover. Now, let me show you really quick from over here on this side. These are those bolts that I was talking about that basically hold this on. They all get torqued a certain way. And then uh, in another video, I'll show you how I, uh, how I how to do a regear. Now, this copper line up here that basically comes from over on this side of the diff, up around the top of the ring gear, down, and then it comes up and out, that is what activates my air locker. And basically what that does is it internally uh, moves a couple of things uh, in, in locks two gears together in, in this particular locker. They're not always gears, but in this one it is. It locks two gears together and then those gears basically force both front wheels to turn. A lot of people may not realize that four wheel drive is actually not four wheel drive. Four wheel drive is actually only two wheel drive. Um, when you have open differentials and you do not have a limited slip in the rear or a locker in the front, you typically only have one rear wheel turning in the back and one front wheel obviously turning in the front. Um, lockers allow you to completely lock that rear axle or that front axle or both so that you truly do have both wheels on whatever axle it is that you turn that locker on functioning and helping you grip and move you forward. Lockers are an awesome thing in the off-road world, but enough talk about that. Let's get back to the diff covers. All right, something else that I do when I clean diff covers off and, and make or the diff surface right here and make sure that it's ready to go is I, something else I do is I use what's called a gasket scraper, okay? Nothing crazy, this one's not fancy, just made by Husky, honestly, could have got it on Amazon, Home Depot, Lowe's, any of those. And I tuck a paper towel just nicely over the top of the diff cover, or uh, over the top of the center section, just to make sure that whatever falls in isn't gonna fall into a place where I can't get it out, just so I can keep the inside of this diff as clean as possible. So let's get to scraping. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed that. Now it's time for the diff cover comparison, which I think is gonna be pretty cool. I think it's gonna show you a lot. I think it's gonna help you make up your own mind. The diff cover comparison is going to be between the Yukon Hardcore diff cover, which is made out of a nodular iron, and another very popular diff cover, also made out of nodular iron, made by ARB. So here are both diff covers directly next to each other. Now, the ARB diff cover comes in this red color and it also comes in black. Those are the only two colors that I know of for the ARB diff cover. And the Yukon Hardcore diff cover, like I said, also made out of nodular iron, only comes in black. Now, the finish on this is, is a little rougher because it's a little bit more raw. Now, they did coat it so it's not going to rust, but this finish is actually a little bit more smooth. The Yukon diff cover here, you can see it kind of straight on. It does not come with this red on it, but that panel is removable with these four machine screws, and then you can paint it whatever color you want to kind of match your rig, which I thought was kind of cool. It allows you to kind of detail it a little bit. The two things I do like about this cover is it still has a drain plug, which a lot of diff covers do not. So that's kind of a nice feature. And it has a nice fill plug in here. Now these fill plugs and drain plugs um, are a little bit nicer in my opinion than the ARB because they are a little bit more protected as well as the fact that they don't have a rubber gasket this around. This is obviously the front cover of the ARB. Both of these are for a Dana 60, by the way, if I haven't said that yet. Um, and the thing that I don't like about these plugs is they definitely stick off a lot farther. Um, and I have actually hit them on rocks. Now, the other thing um, that I don't like about these plugs is when you take out either the bottom or the top, you can actually see down there that there is a rubber o -ring. Yukon obviously has a nice thick wide mating surface, which is great. Um, and it has the, the drain plug in the bottom here. You can't really see it, but it looks the same as the fill plug. And if you get in close here, you can actually see that there's a magnet in there. There's a magnet here and there's a sizable magnet, same size magnet on the drain plug on the bottom. Now, if we step over and we take a look at the ARB diff cover on the inside, same wide mating surface, that's kind of nice. 
Here is the bottom. So you can see that the drain plug on the bottom is not actually in the bottom. Um, it's kind of off to the side. Whereas in the Yukon, it's, it's kind of over here down in the bottom at a lower point. So you'll actually get more of your diff fluid out on the Yukon when you're doing a change. The thing about this one, and we'll, we'll talk about this weird thing in a second here. The thing about this one is this magnet is pretty large, okay? Um, I don't know if it's going to do a better job of co collecting contaminants than the Yukon, but you can see it sticks into the case a little bit further and it's a little bit larger. But even though that one is larger, this one is teeny tiny. And you have two that are the same size on the Yukon. All right, guys, but let's talk about that dipstick for a second. So pretty, pretty cool idea from ARB. What they do is they install a dipstick on the top of the diff cover. So when you drain, when you typically fill a diff cover, the, the old school of thought is you want to fill it until the fluid starts running out. Once the fluid starts running out of the fill plug, it's full. Well, Obviously, on lifted vehicles, when you when you keep the right caster angle and the right drive shaft angle, um, your diff is sometimes tilted a little bit further than it was originally designed to be stock. So ARB's reasoning for having the dipstick is to basically determine at the what height that your fluid would normally fill up to, make a mark on that dipstick, and then that way when you're leaning the diff, you can actually get the same amount of fluid back in because you're pouring it into the top and you can insert the dipstick, pull it back out and check to make sure that you have the right amount of fluid. The Yukon diff cover actually puts their drain or their fill plug rather a little higher on the diff cover so that it can hold a little bit more fluid, but also so that when it is leaning or tilted a little bit with a different caster angle, it still has enough fluid in it. And something kind of cool that they do on the Dana 44 is they actually put two fill plugs. So if you have one maybe at the stock height, you can probably run it at the lower level. And obviously if you're gonna be leaning it and you have a lifted vehicle, you can choose to maybe run it at the upper level or slightly above the lower level by using the upper fill plug. Pretty cool. The thickness of this diff cover, it's pretty thick. It's nodular iron. I wouldn't worry about breaking it. I never did, I never bent it, I never cracked it. It's never deformed. I've scratched it, of course, rubbing it over rocks, but it's pretty thick. Check out this guy, even thicker. When it comes to my diff, I have no problems with running a slightly thicker mating flange, gasket flange on my diff cover. And to be honest with you guys, I'd rather run a thicker one, right? I'm bumping it into rocks, dragging it over stuff. Guys, surprise, surprise, check this out. This is a factory Dana 44 diff cover that comes on a Jeep JK. Now, check this out. Has a fill plug, no drain plug. Kind of weird, okay? Kind of a bummer, makes it a little bit more difficult. Has a nice thick mating surface all the way around it, okay? Nice thick mating surface. But you want to check something out that's kind of scary? Look how thick or thin that mating surface is. Guys, if you're taking your Jeep off-road and you are rubbing it over rocks, something tells me you want something that's probably barely thicker than my fingernail protecting your diff. I mean, check out the difference between these two mating surfaces, guys. I mean, that's ridiculous. And then the Yukon is even bigger than that. I mean, this is why you need an aftermarket diff cover. This, Permatex, anything at your local auto parts store, okay? This is ultra black. Now, Permatex Ultra Black, it's not all that cheap. A tube this size is usually about $10. You can get a bigger one that's kind of almost like a, like a pressurized caulk container, like, a, like if you've ever used like a caulk gun. Those are really awesome, but my problem is I don't use it often enough and it dries up in the container and, and it's just no good. So I use one of these, I stick it in the drawer, I eventually wind up throwing out the rest. But this has high flexibility and oil resistance, okay? It's ideal for all different kinds of vehicles. It's sensor safe, okay? It is an RTV silicone, but it's a higher level of RTV silicone. So that I cut it down, I think a couple of holes so that the opening is like about a quarter inch wide and I get, a, I get about a quarter inch bead all the way around. And then that's what I do. I start on the mating surface, obviously ensure that it's very clean. Once it's clean and free of contaminants, I just start on the mating surface of the diff and I go all the way around with a bead and I make sure it's about that large. Got to do that. 
and I take my finger and I just, I just smear this around and I make sure that it covers everything. But the key is once, once you're done, right, I'm going to take a clean finger and I'll show you. You basically want to just touch it with your finger. And if you have, okay, um, if you have RTV or, or this ultra black that comes off on your finger, like I just did right here, it's not ready yet. You want it to be tacky still, but you want it to be set up to the point where when you dab it with your finger and lift your finger away, there's, there's nothing on your finger. It feels sticky, but there's nothing actually on your finger. And then it's perfect. Be pretty close. Let's get this guy started. This can be the tricky part here. All we need is a couple of threads going. It's a lot easier on the rear of your Jeep because you don't have all this steering and all this other stuff up here kind of getting in the way. But once you have one of those in there, okay, you're going to want to take a second one and get that started somewhere else maybe on the bottom corner like I'm doing here. And once you have both of those in there, guys, okay, um, basically at that point, you can kinda you can kind of let go of it and then just start tightening them all up and putting them in. Now, when you tighten these up and you put all of these in, you wanna make sure that you do it in an X pattern. You do not want to, you do not want to, um, tighten them in a circle because that will that will not spread the pressure evenly along the case and you'll wind up uh you'll wind up actually having leaks in the future when you do it that way all right guys so there it is right yukon diff cover you just saw how to change a diff cover you just saw how to do it and seal it in a way that'll definitely prevent diff cover leaks and seepage uh, you saw why you should change your diff cover from a factory style cover. Uh, and you saw the comparison between two very popular diff covers, the Yukon, which I'm in love with after comparing it, and the ARB. Guys, I hope you enjoyed it. Hit that like and subscribe and definitely, definitely, definitely stay tuned because uh, if you follow me on the Instagram, you're already probably aware, but I have a YJ build that we're going to do a budget buggy on a YJ and we'll be swapping one ton axles under it and I will show you how to re-gear them step by step.